For the top plate I'm going to square it off first in the mill before I start thinking about how I'm going to hold it in the fore jaw to reduce its thickness. So the first cut what I've done I've positioned it fairly square I mean it's, it's I've actually run a dial gauge along this side which I'm calling my reference side by this side of course I mean this side so it's pretty square uh, to the mill but not quite perfect and I am seeing a, f a little bit of undulation along the surface so I'm just going to run a very light cut along this face and then also clean up this face as well so I'll have those two faces clean and square before I then go on and do the other two faces or two sides. The light's not particularly good for the camera, but that's a very clean face. What I'll now do is run the end mill and this face to get those two faces square uh, and clean. Whilst I've got the block clamped to the table, I've quickly swapped the clamps around, also done a quick check with the dial gauge. So the block has not moved. What I'll do now is I'll just run a quick facing cut on this side. That will give me those three sides square. I have just measured across this dimension. Unfortunately, it's just over 99 millimeters or around about 99 millimeters. Um, disappointing, because it'd be nice to have, be able to have machine the block to uh, exactly 100 mil or damn close to 100 mil. So let me do a quick facing cut and I'll measure it again and then I'll probably look to get it to a, 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 a dimension whatever that would be probably 99 millimeters rather than leaving it floating. Hasn't quite put a finished cut on all of that surface, but let's have a measure and see where we are. So that comes out at 99.72 millimeters. It's a bit of a pain. So I'm gonna take off the 0 0.7, so I'll we'll make it a 99 across those two faces. I won't bore you with those uh, cuts. The final operation on the top plate will be to machine off the fourth face, this face here, so we just clamp it to the table in the mill, run, make sure it's square. Unfortunately I need to take off around about three millimeters off this face, so it'll be quite a few cuts. On the final side of the top plate I've now removed almost all the material to give me that front to back dimension. I'm looking for 100 millimeters, so I think I've got around about 0.15 to take off. Let's have a quick check. It's 100.16, so yeah, 0.16 to come off. Bang on, perfect. When I come to drill the bolt holes for the top plate, I will actually use the mill and the DRO to get those very accurately positioned. But before I do that, I'm gonna roughly mark out the four bolt holes and also the position and center point of the tool post um, as a guide so I don't inadvertently use the wrong dimension and put the holes in the wrong place. So first we'll mark out the outline of the tool post which is 66 millimeters square. And 
And what I'll now do is just drop that down to the centre point of 33 mil. So before I go any further with the top plate, I do need to flatten off what I've been using as the bottom. As you can see, it is quite crudely cut. So I'm just gonna skim this off flat, uh, face off in the lathe. So I've got a nice smooth surface before I then proceed with the drilling operations to put those bolt holes uh, in each corner to secure it. As you can see, the workpiece or the base top plate is securely fixed into the four jaw chuck. Just make sure they're all nice and tight. I need to run this at quite a low speed in the diameter. And make sure everything else is nice and secure. I'll lock the carriage. So let's run this up nice and slow. finish isn't too bad could be a little bit better but I've had no lubrication on there Okay, we've now done that last cut across the full face. With the four bolt holes drilled now through in the top plate, we can go for a little mock-up. And here you can see I've got it loosely positioned on top of the bottom plate. Um, and the two bolts in the front or left side, the headstock end, actually pass right through the lower plate into the T-nuts in the bottom. Bit of a change of design on the fly. I thought that would be a better solution. Hopefully give it a bit more rigidity. Um, what I now need to do is drill and tap the corresponding holes in the bottom plate for the rear two bolt holes or rear, rear two bolts on the top plate. You can see them there empty. So that will be next. Then I've got to think about how I'm going to remove round about three millimeters from the thickness of the top plate standing too tall at the moment um, and you can see there where i've marked out the center point for the tool post if we look at the tool post we can see on the tool clamp we can see that it is recessed there's a large diameter recess in the bottom which corresponds to the shoulder on the compound slide so when I machine back the top of my top plate to bring it down three millimeters, I am going to leave a corresponding shoulder. Well, that's the intent, um, as we have here on the compound slide, which will give me a register for that tool post to be firmly seated against when mounted on my fixed base. I need to consider exactly how I'm going to do that. I could put the top plate in the four jaw uh, and offset it 
so the center point is the center of the tall post um, I'm not sure that chuck is actually big enough and I'm worried that there may be a little bit too much out of balance mass rotating on the spindle but I'll give it a go the other option is to drill it and tap it um, and then mount a shoulder a threaded shoulder into the tapped hole that's another option uh, and effectively just put the top plate in the fore jaw centrally to remove the three millimeters that I need to get off on thickness I'll give it some thought and decide how to go.